Welcome to Ghosts and Grit. How's it going? Welcome to Ghosts and Grit. This week I'm joined by Kelly Rizzo. Kelly and I worked together on Special Forces, World's Toughest Test, and we became really great friends while filming that. She is full of tenacity, wit, charm, grit. I mean, she's got it all. She's also from Chicago, so we have to touch on the Mothman. All righty. Um, we good? We good? All right. Uh, Kelly Rizzo, welcome to Ghosts and Grit. I am so happy to be here, Jack. You have no idea. I'm glad that we're like bathed and we're in normal clothes, like, you know, versus like dirty and cold army fatigue. To be honest, I wasn't sure you were going to recognize me today <laughs> because we saw each other in rare form. Yes. Rare form. Yeah. Unshowered, unbathed, as you said. Mm -hmm. Zero hygiene or grooming yeah i that, mean <laughs> i mean that i knew i knew we were doomed when when we went in there and they were like you can you don't even bring your own toothbrush we'll provide the toothbrush and the tooth and i'm like they're like just bring your deodorant and then they didn't give everyone their deodorant <laughs> see this was not the message that i received i got the message that i was allowed to bring certain items i was like surely they'll allow me to have a brush and they're like yeah, yeah you can have a brush and then no. But this was the, the, I think this is the genius thing about how, uh, I guess for people listening, uh, Kelly and I did uh, Special Forces World's Toughest Challenge. Is that? Test. Is, test. World's, World's Toughest, toughest test. test. Every time I, I always forget that. I mean, it was a challenge too. It was a challenge. Yeah. Um, and in that, we basically lived together in a military style barracks and we went through a simulated Special Forces selection program. Um, and... It was it was brutal. It was brutal. And the just to give the audience here an idea of our proximity, uh, Jack and I, our beds are sorry, <laughs> beds, cots, cots. Our, our military green cots were facing each other. Uh -huh. So like when we woke up in the morning, we were like the first person like, we'd seen. we were the <laughs> first people that each other would see. And we were I mean, like face to face, our like our feet were like five feet apart. And it was like waking up in sheer terror every morning. And you were the first like friendly face that I would see every day. And I was literally every day. I'm just like, Jack, protect me, please. And this is scary. I think I think you and I kind of like clicked up because we're like, oh, wait, normal people. I was like, oh, there's yeah. Kelly's normal. <laughs> there was Because there was there was some characters. There were some characters. And I think we bonded over food. Yeah. We bonded over being semi-normal. Demi-normal. And uh you know, like a lot of the same, you know, like music and pop culture references. Mm -hmm. We were doing a lot of um, Tropic Thunder quotes. Yep, and singing of Creed. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Just basically saying that, you know, everyone, no one admits that they like Creed, but yeah. everyone likes Creed. They do. It's yeah. like, uh, you know, they're like donuts. Everyone <laughs> says, oh no, I don't eat donuts, but secretly yeah. they do. Well, of course you do. Yeah. So how have you been post Special Forces selection? Um, I... I'm doing great. I would say there were, and I'm sure you felt this too, like a good 72 hours afterwards that we were not okay. Yeah. Like there was a transition back to the normal world that felt, it was it was difficult. It was interesting. It was a relief, but then you still, but then we strangely missed it. Yeah. You know, like I missed everybody and, uh, you know, being able to, you know, like relive those experiences. That's why I'm so excited to be here with you now is because it's the first time like I've seen right. anybody, you know, since like post show and to see these people that you went through something that intense with yeah. is, is really special. But yeah, I mean, it took me a few days to acclimate. And I mean, I, I do have pictures that I will show one day of the bruises that I had on my body that like I'm sure everyone did. But I mean, we were beat up yeah we were truly beat up i would the closest thing you could i think really compare it to it it was like being in some kind of i don't want it to come across bad saying this but you you are in like a, a kind of a prison almost because yeah. like you're you don't know your schedule you don't know what every day is going to bring it's not the same every day like some days you stay up till one o'clock in the morning and you're up at 8 30 other days you're in your the lights off for 11 and you're up at five it's like so you can't get a rhythm uh the <laughs> you're not allowed to communicate with anyone except from for the directing staff uh and they're terrifying <laughs> terrifying because I, I went into it i was thinking like 
okay, like, yeah, these guys are going to be tough, but there's going to be a bit of, you know, humanity there. No. No. Those- post, post now, it's like, I'm friends with them on Instagram, and yeah. they're lovely to me, and totally. they like, like my photos, yeah. and I'm like, wait, they're people? Like, right? I can't believe they're humans, and they, they're actually friendly and sweet, but not yeah. when we were there. Uh, all right, who was, who were you most afraid of? Who was like, your, who was the DS where you were like, oh shit? I would say while we were there, it was Billy. Okay. He's so scary. I get like because Foxy had a bit more humor. Yes. He was he was a little bit funnier. Yeah. And Q, he was new, so you knew that he was being extra mean to try to be extra mean because yeah. he was new. So we wanted to make sure that he was like doing his job. But every there were a couple times I sensed some humanity from him. And Billy at the very, like, I would say a, a little bit, a few days in, he started to be a little bit more yeah, human, <laughs> but he was really scary in the beginning. Oh, fully. No, Billy is fucking terrifying. But I tell you who was the, who was the meanest, I thought, was Q. <laughs> Q was like, I was terrified of Q. He would just, because the, sh- the shit he would say was so mean. I'd be like, oh, fuck, he dude. Did, he, he, did, he did say some mean stuff. But then, it, but you know what? Since then- Great like, guys. Right. Yeah. S- sent me saying, you know, was telling me how like he was so happy that I was on the show and, you know, what a great job and like so happy that we had this experience. And I'm like, hey, wait, so you guys really <laughs> like you liked me? There is a hot. <laughs> you in liked there? me? You really liked me? <laughs> right. Exactly. So, yeah, it was a, uh, yeah, I, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Foxy, Foxy was, you could get the moments of like, you know, he'd give Daddy you a wink. Daddy Foxy. Daddy Fo- oh my God. <laughs> I, I don't know how much we can say about oh God. What, air quote, Daddy Foxy, but. Um, Maybe they'll find out one day what Daddy Foxy means. <laughs> oh my God. That was one of my favorite. favorite. I was so crazy. It was one little moment of levity though that yeah. we had. Yeah. There was and, a lot of funny though. We There was a lot of laughing. So I have a funny story. All right. Fire it. <laughs> Night. Well, I mean let's just say clearly everyone was there night one um and tara reed stole my boots <laughs> <laughs> and the best part about it was i had the smallest shoe size there of of the other girls like not necessarily because i should have but everyone's boots just ended up being too big for them pretty much and mine were a five and a half and i was the only one that had a five and a half and i put them to warm them by the fire and they were gone, and the only person missing was Tara. Remember, we're all like, we're all in there, mm-hmm. but she was gone. And I'm like, guys, where's my boots? And I think you were like, did Tara take your boots? <laughs> and I'm like, did Tara take my boots? And I found her, I was like, Tara, I think you took my boots. And she's like, no, I didn't. I'm like, yeah, you did. I was like, They're, you're the only one out here. I was like, can you just check and make sure? Mine are size five and a half. And she's like, oh, okay. She's like, oh, these are yours. I was like, yeah, I know. And she's like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, it's okay. It's a mistake. It's fine. And like 20 minutes later, my boots are missing again. <laughs> and he, I think it was you or, or Nick or something. It was like, Tara stole your boots again. I was like, yeah. And I found her again. And she was, and she's like, no, these ones are mine. I was like, I, look, I promise you, you stole my, like, these are mine. And it was like. Wait, didn't she turn around and go. But they just fit me better. Right. She's like, but but these fit me better. I'm like, I'm really sorry, but I don't care. Like, yeah, like, my, no, those these, are my boots. You have no idea how much these boots mean to us. You know, like, yeah, it's not. Oh, yeah. No, I, I, we'd been with those boots for a good week before breaking them in. Yeah. And, and training in them you're not given much so what's yours it's like you you protect <laughs> it's precious yeah it's did, precious. did you sneak anything in no I, I i wasn't i didn't even try to sneak i thought i was allowed to bring i had a bag full of like my brush and you know chapstick and a bunch of stuff that i thought yeah. i was allowed and nothing made it through except my contacts deodorant and like prescription medication and that, mm. that was it yeah i uh i'm trying to think what they i think I, I snuck in a tiny little bar of chocolate i had a tiny like it was from the breakfast they gave you in the morning and it was in there and i just shoved it in my pocket and then when we had to change clothes i like put it back in my i was like okay oh, i'm keeping this this is my little morale booster and i kind of like ate it like with a tear rolling down my my cheek at one point <laughs> that was like one day when we had lunch so in the 
between challenges in our transport vehicles, they would throw a bagged lunch at us that was actually really good. It was yeah. like a bakery sandwich. And one day they gave us brownies. Yes. And I remember I saved the brownie and I like put it in my pocket mm -hmm. and I was like eating it throughout the day, like at dinner. Like I was like, guys, I have brownie if anyone wants like dessert, you know, because we, you want pocket we brownie. certainly didn't get dessert. No. And that was one of the interesting things that I wasn't really expecting. It's you take for granted just eating whenever you want. Mm. And it's like if you don't eat those meals at the assigned times that you don't eat. Yeah. There's no like vending machine or there's not like a little kitchen somewhere. Yeah, can I get it? There's, there's no, no craft crafty. Service, yeah. Right. Where, you know, there's even a pile of a basket full of granola bars. Like yeah. nothing. So it's like you eat then or you're hungry. And that was took a little bit for me to get used to. Yeah. No, it was like that's why I, that's why I was kind of like, you know, it's slightly prison esque. It's right. like whereas if you, we were in really in the military or let's say boot camp or something, you have more luxuries. It's it's true. And I would say yeah. that because I've had a lot of friends go through selection and I like a, a very good friend of mine. He um, he was working for me, quit working for me and joined the army, went into special forces. So like I was in contact with him a lot. And like his packing list when he went into selection was like insane. He could bring like supplements and he could bring in like a bunch of um mobility stuff like foam rollers and like you know massage ball like everything oh a foam it, roller would have been so oh nice. my god a foam roller would have been remember how sorry we were we would just every like after a challenge we'd come back and we would all just kind of like strip down and we would just do like lunges and yeah. try to stretch and yeah and the just try to get our bodies like somewhat feeling normal but yeah. nothing felt normal no no, I could. Yeah, it was it. Man, yeah, it was it was tough. And I was talking about this the other day on a podcast. For me, the toughest part was going to sleep at night. And I know you had a hard time sleeping. Yeah. Well, like the first couple of nights, like you just weren't sleeping. I was not. I, I got maybe an average of three hours a night. Yeah. And it was and I don't know what I'm for me. Actually, I know why. Like I couldn't my head wouldn't turn off. I felt so on edge, like they're gonna come in at any point and they're gonna get us up yes. and they're gonna make us do something. I just couldn't turn off. And they don't, and the the thing that, you know, I watched season one, I've seen the English version and the Australian version of the show. And, and so like, there's a lot that doesn't make it onto the show of the process. And, and, and I and I think that's for a, a, maybe a reason because it it's it's fucking gnarly. Like you you know when you turn on the show you see like oh look it's people, the they doing a challenge and then they're talking about it and then it's a you know maybe there's a little bit of like them sat around shooting the shit between challenges and a, you know and and evolutions or whatever, um, but going in there like knowing what I know now like it it um. Well, I guess going in not knowing, it made it so much harder. Right. Because you're not really briefed on like, hey, when you're in there, it's going to work like this. They're going to tell you, you're going to get information. It's going to be like this every day. You know, there's yeah, we didn't know anything. Anything. Because really. watching, I watched season one prior too, but you, as you said, don't see all that behind the scenes stuff. And now I've watched season one again post mm -hmm. doing the show. And now I'm like, oh my God. And like now I'm seeing all these things that- yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's how that works. Or th that's what it's like when you're, you know, in the bunkhouse. And, yeah. You know, then like you actually, you know, can see the cameras and stuff like that. But I, I didn't I didn't expect. I mean, keep in mind when you were saying before, like, we don't know what time we were going to bed. There was an LED light panel on the ceiling that just Turned shut off. off. Yeah. And when it shut off, it was pitch black. Mm -hmm. Like there was nothing like we had our little like miners <laughs> head torches like, head torches that we you know if we could find it mm -hmm. could use in the middle of the if night. you had one not everyone had one no. some people didn't get, get you or know, they like lost it right yeah. yeah so uh it was and then the lights would just turn i mean that was so crazy they would just turn on like 6 a.m or 7 a.m or 8 a.m we had no idea when yeah and we were so on edge remember we were like hearing their voices mm -hmm. in our heads That's right for days after like recruits yeah. and <laughs> duty we recruit home. yeah especially i remember when you were duty recruit one night remember we were like we're scared to go to bed because we knew they were going to we just had this feeling that they were going to keep yeah. And I think that was the it was the night you were yep. that we got to bed and then they woke us up again. And 
And I'm starting to think like, because I, I found out after the fact, they, uh, the DS had monitors in, so they could hear and see us the entire time. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, we, as, we assumed so, but we didn't, I mean. Yeah, they, they were like, oh, no, they had monitors in there. They could see, they hear everything. And so it makes it really, um, well, you're just on edge. And yeah. it like you, you're kind of you, you, you're like a. I felt like I was like a nervous wreck, um, but it was, uh, but it was still awesome. As like fucked up as we're, and we're making it sound to be, it was still fucking. Oh, it was still awesome. like the greatest thing I've ever done. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was. Would you do right. it again? Um, if they called you and went, "Hey, you want a shot at the title?" Like, like an all stars. Yeah. Thing? <laughs> Maybe would you? Yeah, I'd go back and do it. I would go back in a hot. Like if they were like, "Go tomorrow," I'd be like, "I'm in." If it was somewhere like temperate, like not 115 degrees and not 30 degrees, if it was somewhere like a nice mild 60. See, I think <laughs> I think Fox should do one in the jungles. Yeah, that would in be my mind. That's gnarly. where would make sense for next because that's you know it's They've kind done of the desert. Middle, yeah, right? yeah. It would uh, yeah, it would be so brutal though. Ooh, oh, the bugs. Yeah, we were very fortunate to not have any bug situation. We were, you know, um, I would take the cold over bugs any day. I would actually take the cold over the heat. We did see a raccoon. Yep. Or a raccoon family. Yeah, yeah, they were fighting in the, the wood pile in, 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 the, in the firewood that we had to chop. Mm -hmm. Which I never had firewood duty. I, I somehow <laughs> like slipped through the cracks on that one. Didn't like JoJo nearly like chopped her leg. Well, JoJo wanted firewood duty. She did. Every She's time. like, I want to know how to chop. She was so into it. Yeah. She was, let me just say something about JoJo. For 20 years old, A, what a badass. Mm -hmm. B, she was such like a natural born leader. Yep. She was really good at keeping us all like on schedule, on time, making sure everyone was like dressed. I mean, she was the one that was really on it about keeping us all, you know, like that button's undone. Like yeah, we all she, have to match. Like she was really good. Her inner she was dance such a mom team. came out. Yeah, she was such like a great team leader. Yeah, she really was. And I said this, and I and I mean it. And I'll till the till the day I die, mm -hmm. if my daughters end up half of who JoJo Siwa is, I'd be a proud father because she is so like for her age, like you said, for her age mm -hmm. and growing up in the chaos of entertainment and. You know, being a YouTube sensation and all that, like she is, she's a really phenomenal woman. Yeah. And it was really cool to get to know her. And I went in there with like, oh, JoJo Siwa, it's going to be like having like a, a you know, it's going to be a thing and just completely changed my, per you know, perception of her. She was my bathroom buddy. She yeah. was the one that every single night she was like, you know, uh, when, when you turn 40, You'd, you're more likely to have to go to the restroom in the middle of the night, you know? And she's 20. I'm like, she certainly, she's like, no, I go like three times in the middle of the night. She goes, if you ever need to go, wake me up and I'll go with you. And I'm like, you don't mind me waking you up? Like, this sleep is precious. Mm -hmm. You don't mind me waking you up? She's like, no, 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 seriously, I'll go anytime. I was like, all right. And so in the middle of the night, because let's explain to people, we're not allowed to go to the restrooms alone. We nope. have to have a buddy. And you have to run everywhere. You have to jog slash run with your buddy, even if it's three in the morning, you have to like put your combat boots on and your clothes and your coat and then run to the outdoor bucket bathrooms. And, in like 30 degree weather. Right, with, with another person. And I would, in the middle of the night, be like, Jojo, are you up? And she's like, yeah, you wanna go to the bathroom? I'm like, yeah, will you go with me? She's like, yeah, let's go. Like, never was even groggy. I never heard her go, ugh, fuck, once. She never complained. Never. And I'm like, everyone, com I mean, we had football players and, you know, uh, basketball players and world star Olympian athlete. Everyone had a, you know, well, Erin, actually, she never complained either. Erin, no. Erin, Erin, she, she she's the silent destroyer. I... I made it a point for at least a while. I really fought every urge to complain, and I didn't for a while. And then finally, when my body just started breaking down, and my knees were, and I like, <laughs> then I couldn't stop. <laughs> then once yeah. it start, once the flood complaining floodgates opened, it didn't stop. Breaking a habit can be hard, so there is an easy way to do it. Just replace the bad in the bad habit. We're talking about our sponsor, Fume, and we're looking at the problem in a different way. What is Fume? You might ask. Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that does just that. Instead of vapor, fume uses flavored air. Instead of electronics, fume is completely natural. 
And instead of harmful chemicals, you're just getting tasty, delicious flavors right into your mouth. It's great. It's awesome. I use it. My wife uses it. Fume has served over 150,000 customers and has thousands of success stories. And there's no reason you can't be one of them. You can get one of these awesome devices by going to tryfume.com. Use the promo code GHOSTS and save 10% off when you order the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com. Use the code GHOSTS and save an additional 10% off your order today. Get on it if you're over stanky, stanky breath. Uh, how long, how much notice did you have that you were going to do the show before you did it? It was in talks for maybe like a month, okay. but then it wasn't finalized until like eight days before I left. Yeah. So I had, fortunately I'd been training in general, but I only had eight days of specific yeah. special forces training where I loaded up my backpack <laughs> with did you laugh when they sent you the email of how to train and it was like a 12 week training schedule <laughs> and I was like where's week the 10 one. day week one and then it was like a hike uphill running six to eight miles a day I'm like all right well we know that's not happening yeah but I, yeah when I got it I'm like wait, wait I've got 10 days right and I loaded up a backpack with like almost 30 pounds of water bottles mm -hmm. And I would just run up my hill, like run. Mm. And and then I would run on a treadmill. And then once we got there and we were allowed to work out in the gym, I would run on the treadmill with my combat boots mm. on. Yeah. But that was, that was it. Yeah, I was just doing a bunch of squats and push-ups. I was like, I'm, I had 10 days. I was like, I'm I not I just knew gonna... the endurance stuff is, you know, what would get me eventually. Like, yeah. And I'm wasn't... not a... I'm not, you know, the the thing I'm I'm actually most depressed about watching the show is like I'm the slowest fucking runner, and I was behind everyone with every, I was last to everything. You, I feel like I was. No, I was like, do you remember? Because like with the rock challenge, I fucked up that one. I was like, oh, I'm gonna grab this rock. It's got good handles, and it was a thousand pounds. I will say without without giving too much away, I will say that. We made it through the rock challenge, and the only one throwing up at the end was a professional athlete, and it was not us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a very highly paid professional athlete. <laughs> I know. Athlete. I was like, wait, he's puking and I'm not? Yeah. I'm like, yes. Yeah, that was uh, that rock challenge was rough. Wait, hold on. We got to <laughs> talk about the uh, the van. We can. I feel like we could tell when we when the first when they put us in the I'll van. I'll never forget this. <laughs> wait, can I say what you do said? Do it. Do okay. it. So I didn't, obviously when we, right before we got in our transport vehicles to begin the initial moment of the show, um, we were standing outside. I saw you, obviously I recognized you and we were like, oh, hi, I'm Jack. Hi, I'm Kelly. And then we saw Bodie and there, were, so there were seven people in our van. And then I'm standing next to this guy that had like his scarf thing like pulled up over his face and a hat on and I didn't know who he was and I couldn't see his face and then finally I'm standing next to him and he pulls his scarf down he's like hi I'm Tom and I was like hi I'm Kelly and but I've never seen Vanderpump Rules so, like I didn't know and he shaved his mustache so I didn't know who it was and we get in the van and I'm sitting next to this Tom character who I don't know who he is and you're sitting right behind me and you spot him, and the first words like that I hear when we get in this van is you, you go, looks like we've got a scandal on our hands. <laughs> and I, I'm like, oh my god, I'm sitting next to Tom Sandoval. I'm like, oh no, <laughs> I'm like no. And so meaning like the first impression of me on the show is sitting next to him <laughs> and he was like very funny huh he was like uh, you could tell it just like <laughs> deflated him and then i felt kind of bad <laughs> but he was already so nervous yeah like that people were going to have this impression of him yeah and i remember night one uh you know he was pretty bummed just about he was kind of venting about his whole situation in general and he was like you know so i wanted to come here to get my ass kicked and i said look listen buddy I said, I've never seen this show. I'm sure a lot of people here, I can speak for them as well. Like, none of us care. Like, I, I I don't know what you did. Like, we're all in the same boat. We are all equals here. Yeah. We're all starting from scratch. Consider this a clean slate and a fresh start because none of that matters here. We are in a different world. And he was like, wow, like, thanks for that, you know? Yeah. Because 
he thought everyone was going to be judging him. And we're all like, we're just trying to function. No one cares about what you did before right now. That's not in play right now. Yeah, there was a there was a time when me, Bodhi and, and Tom were in one of the vans riding back to the to the camp. And like me and Bodhi just kind of like went in on him a little bit, not like being a dick. We were just like because he kept referring to his situation as like his scandal. <laughs> and we're like, I was like, Tom, stop calling your life a fucking scandal, dude. Like, you fucked up, own it. Like, right. I'm not fucking, I'm no saint. I fucked up in my marriage. Like, it happens. You're not the only person this ever happened to. Just, I mean, what do you want out of life? And he's like, well, I don't know. I don't, you know, and I'm just like, just make a decision. Do you want to be with, which chick do you want to be with? What, who do you want to, do you want to fix it? You want to move on? Like, what? And, we, and like, Bodhi and I just got, like, all, like, just kind of, you know, laid it on him. But I, I got to say, like, you know, Tom, like, I'd go grab lunch with Tom. I didn't mind him, you know? Yeah. I mean, he's not, he's, you know, I wouldn't, he's not going to be, like, a best man at my wedding, but, like. He was a bathroom buddy of mine yeah. a couple times, you know? Yeah. He, he woke up with me in the middle of the night and yeah. and jogged to the to the stalls with me. Yeah. Um, he no, was... he was fine. I, I you know, we, we had some nice chats together, and, um, yeah, it was, like, even though this was a show, it was so much more real because we were all like we could not. There was no ego. Yeah. We, could, we were stripped down. There was absolutely nothing from like the outside world that mattered. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I was like, buddy, let that shit go. Like, yeah. who cares? Like, just like you're in this situation. Embrace this and, you know, realize that this is the real shit right here and all that stuff about you know scandals in the media and social media like who cares like yeah. it's gonna be old news soon anyway and like this is real right now yeah you yeah like be in this moment and that actually i think that's i i really noticed it being in there like when i came out i was like fuck like you're so present you have to be so present because you can't yeah. distract yourself on a phone or any it's like your world is the four walls of the compound. And I just, there were times where I was just sat outside, like, and I was just, just sat there. Like, I wasn't even thinking about anything. I was just, like, looking around, just being like, I, I don't know what to, I, like, I was, I, I think because we've all been so used to checking out with devices or distraction or, you know, the go, comings and going of life or kids or whatever, no one ever just sits there going, all right, I'm just looking around and this is this is my life in this moment. At the most beautiful scenery. Oh my God, it was amazing. These mountains, snow-capped mountains of New Zealand. Yeah. There were so many times, remember we would just be sitting, we were like, where are we right now? Like, is this real life that yeah. we're getting to do this? What an incredible opportunity and just what an incredible, you know, Adventure. Time. Yeah, adventure. And you were right about being present. Because not only did we not have the distractions, but literally we are doing some of the craziest, most intense physical challenges ever that like you couldn't, you had for your own well-being and safety, you had to not be distracted. Yeah. And you had to be in the moment because you're like, I'm about to do some crazy shit. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know? I sucked at the challenges. I was not good no, at the challenges. did it? No, like the, the endurance stuff I was okay, but like some of the stunt stuff I was just like... Pfft. See, it was the opposite for like for me. It was because uh, I was I I was doing really well with the challenges, but it was yeah that endurance stuff and even just running like even just getting to the challenges. They're like, all right, now you have to run a mile just to get to the challenge. It was that stuff that was wait you know in the bee stings and can we talk about yes when we had to go do the when we had to hike in to do the ice challenge. <laughs> The and pond. the pond and Tara oh, God. just laid down and people were she just was like, like Mer. she just like <laughs> collapsed and like I don't know who it was just like grabbed her arms and legs and was just sliding I think her Bodhi up. had to carry her body <laughs> and um <laughs> and Tyler had to carry her Bergen yeah. her backpack yeah. which was 35 pounds so he had to carry his and hers, and then Bodhi and someone else was like carrying her, like limp body, <laughs> just sliding it up the ice slope. Right. It was man. <laughs> that it was. Yeah, that was. Uh, and man, Tara can snore. 
She was the, wasn't, I think she and Tom were the snorers. Big time. I was like, oh my God, like it sounded like a, like a bulldog next to me. And see, that was the other thing that I was concerned about was, I was like, normally I have a sound machine and I, or a white yeah. noise machine and I have earplugs. I tried to bring earplugs. Those got confiscated. Um, I was, remember I was shoving paper towels. Yeah, I was like, ears. I was like, shove paper towels. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah that's your idea. It, it helped. Um, but I remember I was like, because it not only was this a pitch black room, but it was completely, there was no sound. It wasn't even like we were hearing sounds of the ocean yeah. in the background. It was dead quiet. So any of the snoring or any of the, um, you know, when people would move mm. in their cots, like the creaking of yeah. the beds was so loud and there was nothing to drown it out. Yeah. And the point is that did not add to my no sleepability. No, but it was, uh, yeah. No, God, I, that first, you know, when I, you know, first night out of there, I was like, oh bed and i could fall asleep listening to a po i have to i have to fall asleep listening to something i have to yeah. podcast or a you know t movie or something like and so i don't my head won't turn off if i'm in total silence it's like this weird thing it was it's funny i was talking to the uh the author neil strauss on this week and we were talking about that and he's like he wants me to go do a uh, a silent meditation one of those silent retreats where you don't say anything for seven days oh, and god like, yeah <laughs> you're gonna do it I, I said i would but i'm terrified um yeah oh my god i would last five minutes yeah it's uh yeah i would be tougher i think than any uh special forces show yeah yeah i mean um, unless you're like just in a spa setting with, yeah like, exactly amazing food and drink and there's like sound and... bowls and you're getting massaged yeah, yeah yeah no i don't think it's that you're right if somebody's giving me a massage like for 12 hours a day for like i could shut up yeah yeah totally i'll fall right asleep can, um the... can we talk about one quick thing that I was unaware of, and this is a little pop culture-y, it's a little gossipy, but whatever, I'm going to throw it out there because it was just, I, I saw some article about it the other day. I didn't know that, like, Nick, like, hated <laughs> Tom. I was seeing all these articles saying that, like, Nick hated Tom before the show, and then they ended up on the show together. Wow, I had no, uh, you know what? Maybe it was like I, a huge thing that just came out the other day. I think maybe he, he, Nick has vocalized about Tom on his podcast because yeah. remember when Nick came in oh Tom came in he's like he got pretty pissed at Nick and he's like he was trying to get me to like say I'll never do what I did ever again and like yeah, see I didn't know like yeah. all this stuff went over my head because I've you know I knew Nick from Chicago but I've never I don't know him yeah. I knew him like personally but not um you know any of like I've never seen The Bachelor or any yeah, of that yeah, stuff, yeah. so I didn't know any of that drama. And then it's just funny because I heard at, like post Special Forces literally this last week that they had some beef and some drama, and but I never saw that like while we were there. Yeah, no, Nick, Nick's a. I thought Nick was a, a really. He was. I, I was unsure of him at first because he was so kind of quiet and reserved. Mm -hmm. But I really, I really like Nick. Yeah, <laughs> were you there? <laughs> when well now I'm like I hope I was when so no when, funny. when Tom went on the whole family feud against the Kardashian story and he gave the play by play of literally everything that happened I don't think so he he went to tell this story about I guess he did the he did family feud and it was Vanderpump crew versus Kardashians and like he went on for 15 to 20 minutes giving an exact play by play of what happened and like he wouldn't shut up and like Nick and I just like looked at each other like what the fuck dude and he just kept going and going and go <laughs> which is like what the shit but that's kind of like not that I know him super well you know spent a week with him but like that's kind of the vibe I get from from old Tom Sandoval like he's yeah. just kind of in his own world we had a, a transport together where it was just the two of us and he was talking about his band like the entire time yeah. and i remember there was one point like an hour in where i was like he hasn't asked me a question about anything but yeah. i was like oh so tell me more about your band like <laughs> so do you play the guitar so do you you know i was like trying to like i was like well i'm, I'm trying to you know it's interesting i was trying yeah. to keep the convo going but it was like he was almost like performing for me yeah you know oh totally yeah yeah, yeah it was uh Oh, you know, what I thought it was hilarious too. 
thinking about it and I've like reflected and I, and I remember saying something to my airy my fiance about it when I got back I'm like they, they made us watch that like pre-video like before you go in everyone's <laughs> I guess in their hotel rooms and we get an email and a text being like you need to watch the videos that have just been emailed right. to you and it was like laying out what you can and cannot do what happens in medical stuff it was like a whole like pre right, safety yeah and they're like you are not allowed to undress in front of any like it was like this whole thing and then like day two they're like everyone get wet and then get undressed in that tent together and you're like within like two seconds like two minutes of being there people like naked in front of each other and i'm like what the fuck well, yeah well <laughs> what's funny is there were multiple challenges at least three where tom and i were the last two to go and so we were always next to each other and we were always you know like it was just us yeah and and two of these were water-based challenges where we then it was the two of us in these tents together and both times one uh angela white black china was in there too but one time it was both times it was tom and me and he's totally butt naked and he's like oh sorry i don't i was like honestly i do not care and there was one time where like i had to you know like at least like change sports bras or something because you know we had our dry kit and our wet kit and he's behind me. like i literally have nothing and the camera's like right behind and i remember i turned to the camera i was like can, can you give me one second please yeah you know can i have a little bit <laughs> I of said privacy that. i was like can you just turn the camera the other way while i get my dick out for a second <laughs> and the guy like laughed and he was like oh, okay i know well the, this at least it was a it was a lady camera lady and uh so i was like all right you know <laughs> felt a little bit more comfortable but it was I was like, why are they making Tom and me get butt naked together in these tents? Yeah, is that is that the <laughs> like new Scandal? Multiple times. Oh, the, oh you were god. in a scandal. Oh my god. <gasps> I can see I'm the headlines now. Daily Mail. But uh, hopefully I end up being like the victim in the situation. <laughs> I was victimized. Or the by predator. Tom or the predator. I'm coming oh for you, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh god, man. It's so interesting. It really was a, a, a great it is like a, a great social experiment. It's like how it's, it, well, it is like how much can people take? How much can you not care? How much can you like there's all everything is gauged in kind of, well, what what are you willing to, to do and and how much shit are you willing to eat? Right. And what's interesting is unlike most reality shows, this is not based on stupid drama. Mm -hmm. It's not based on, you know gossip and silly yeah. stupid stuff that you see in so many reality shows this is truly about the determination of the individual and like the grit and the yeah. ability of these people and ultimate respect for the military too yeah and so it's really all about putting us into their world and seeing how we can do in their world while giving it the most respect possible mm -hmm. and is ter in terms of reality shows go that's why like i wanted to even be a part of this because i'm like it's not salacious it's not totally it doesn't have to do like there's, there's no hair and makeup <laughs> right and it's but it doesn't have to do with like popularity or anything and and you know there's no like confessionals and like oh she said this and me you know it's it's really about the challenges and the respect for the special forces and you know how can we overcome ourselves to see what kind of person we can be yeah were you, were you there when i realized that angela was black china <laughs> <laughs> i was like she got up and left and i, I like she i forgot I, it just kind of like hit me and i because i heard so, she said something about rob kardashian or whatever and i was like she left and i was like is angela black china <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I didn't know right away but then I st I still realized it was like during the first yeah. challenge when we were outside on that Were you there ravine. when she nearly killed Brian? Can we talk about that for a second? I cuz I missed it. Oh, <gasps> you missed I it. I missed it oh. and I only found out like days later. Oh. I was there. Uh so out of the blue you must have maybe I think we were just done eating dinner yeah. maybe, maybe so you were for crying somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you were crying in a hole somewhere. Um all of a sudden, she just lashes out at Brian Austin Green, and who was sitting next to Bodie, 
and she's like she's like i'll beat your ass and like i'll kill you and we're, we're all like wait what is going on and she's like don't play with me don't you play with me and he's like what and it was she's like i'm from or she's like i'm from dc like i can beat your ass and and he's like, what are you talking about? Like, he was so caught off guard and she just unleashes on him because I guess he, she was the duty recruit. Mm -hmm. And I guess he had, you know, said something like, come on, duty recruit. Like, it's your job or like something like just yeah. a mild joke, like a little, you know, yeah. no big deal. But like giving her a little bit of a hard time. But as a joke, like anyone else would yeah, have. It's not like he called her a bitch or anything. Right. No one else would have gotten offended. Everyone would have been like, oh, OK. She lost it on him and just started and he was like had to like apologize. And he's like, I'm really sorry. I did not mean to offend you. I was literally joking. And she was like, all right, fine. You're joking. OK. OK. All right. If you were joking. All right. I, I take back what I said. But it was got really uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She. Uh... And I was like, poor Brian. Like he didn't do any like he was just my like, you yeah, know, he was just being Brian. Right. Yeah, that was uh, like not dramatic. He was not a troublemaker. I, I aside from that though, like there was no, no beef. except from Tara stealing my boots. Yep, <laughs> Jojo <laughs> fighting in my face. She fought it in my face like eight times. <laughs> no way. Because I'd be like, once Tara, you know, when it, when it was whittling down, we got bunked next to each oh, other, yeah. and I would just be like sat on the edge of my bed, and she would just stand up, like. <laughs> It's like fucking JoJo, stop! And she would, she'd be like, "What?" And I'm like, "Go outside." That's <laughs> hilarious. You know what? I'm surprised that we didn't hear more of that when it was very quiet in yeah. the middle of the night. Yeah, yeah. I, I certainly I think did not we. Hear. I think no one was really eating enough to fart. <laughs> Maybe they intentionally just fed us like non-gassy yeah. foods. Can we wait? Were you were you sat there with uh, Tom when he was saying, <gasps> "This is the most succulent <laughs> sausage." I've these. These are so tender. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and you and I laughed so hard. Okay, so backstory. The food was slightly subpar, but one day they had these like sausages that were like they were like summer sausages, like can like Hormel yeah. canned sausages almost. But but bigger than that. And they tasted fine, but they were kind of, you know, like it's mushy. Yeah, they're a little mushy. Yeah. And Tom's like, oh, I need more of these. These are delicious. They're so tender. I love these sausages. And you and I were like, ew, did he just say tender? <laughs> tender sausages. And we were fucking die. Oh, man. That was I probably know. the hottest I laughed. We laughed so hard. He's like, what? And we're like, you just called the sausages tender. <laughs> like in a creepy kind of way. Oh, fuck. You know, actually, I'm actually, yeah, wow. Can we go back? Yeah. Let's go. Let's get Take on a plane. We'll just go. I know. I can. I can navigate us to it. I remember how to get there. So we'll just turn up, and it'll be like in um, Big when he goes to the carnival and everyone's left. Oh my god. Well, I. I feel like it took a while for me to understand. You know when, we were going towards the camp. Yeah. You know, because someday I were like, "Where are we going? Is this is this the way back home? Is this the way home?" And then finally, after a while, you're like, "All right, this is the way home." Yeah. But, oh, man, Jojo loved the food. Yeah, she like. Yeah, She's like, this is what I eat at home every day anyway. This is great. <laughs> Remember that first like chicken and rice dinner yeah. that we had? She's, She's like, like this is amazing. I eat chicken and rice every day. I was oh, like, man. oh, salt, salt, I'm putting salt on it. All right. Aside from special forces and being a recruit, how's uh, how's your how's your traveling been going? Good. I just got back from Iceland last week. Ooh, tell me about that. You've probably been. I've never been to what? Iceland. Never been. No, never. I had a I had a friend in high school who was from Iceland, and like a bunch of kids. That we were all in school with, they all went went and visited and stuff. But I never, they would, he would like bring them like every summer. Um, but I never m made it out there. I've just, I really want to go. It was for a bachelorette party. Whoa. Yeah. You got was, some cool friends. It was, yeah. My friend wanted her bachelorette in Iceland. So there were only six of us. Mm -hmm. It was pretty small, but it was cool. We did, you know, a lot of the. We didn't do the level of adventuring that, let's say, you would probably do if you went there. We did more of the touristy kind of adventure stuff, which was cool. We got to see some cool stuff. But, yeah, it was great, great food scene. Well, I was going to really, say. Really, really great restaurants. Everything was just stellar. The food was amazing. Um, great cocktails. They really go above and beyond with their whole food and beverage scene. Mm. When you go, when you're, you know, if your friend's like, hey, we're going to go here and, you know, we want to go do this trip, do they 
lean on you a lot for kind of food and entertainment because it is kind of your your bread and butter? Usually, however, this trip it was actually kind of refreshing because I did nothing. I, I showed up. I had I didn't even know like really what the itinerary was. I was like, this is a nice time to just take a break, like let other people plan it and just go with the flow and go along for the ride and not have to be the one that's always, you know, doing all the research and planning all the restaurants and making the reservations. It was nice for once to just go with the flow and show up. And, who you know, the girls that planned it did a really great job. So I was impressed. I don't know if I'd go back, mm -hmm. but. It was, you know, a really cool place. Right on. Did you go to any of the hot springs? I did. Nice. Did the Blue Lagoon. Uh -huh. Did some hot springs. Iceland knows their their hot springs. Um, but I flew from Chicago. It was five hours. It was a five hour flight. So it's really, it's I actually it's not. Just, yeah, you just uh, go right over the top. Yeah. So it was actually not. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I guess it was halfway between England. So yeah, it's yeah, pretty it was, much. It was not. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Wow. Yeah. Um and. Since you've been back, I mean, because so much of what you do is music and food and entertainment. Any? Did you hit any festivals this summer? Oh gosh, uh, yes. I would have um, thought I just went to. Um, this might not be as much up your alley, um, but it's Chicago's biggest country music festival. Um, I was there a few weeks ago, called the Windy City Smokeout. So it's barbecue. Oh, and. And country music. That's like and right so up was, your alley. It's like yeah, built yeah. for you. It's, they take the entire United Center parking lot and turn it into this huge... It's like the country music Lollapalooza. Okay. Um, I missed Lala this year, which was last weekend. Um, but it was... It's I've gone... It's 10 years straight and I've gone every year. And it's like my favorite thing to do in the summer in Chicago. Is, nice. Yeah. So it was like Luke Bryan, Zach Brown Band. Um, they get great acts and... And the barbecue is really good. No, that, that never sucks. Yeah, you know, good barbecue can it can make everything better. If they would have given us good barbecue on uh, on Special Forces, I wouldn't. You the know, morale. Everyone. Would have been they would so have no boosted. one quitting. Right. The morale would be like remember, that was that became a thing. People were like, uh, like keep the hot tea in your thermos and bring it with you. It's a morale booster. And yeah. I was like. This is weird. Like things that you would never have thought about before. And then they're right. You're like, oh, yeah, a little hot tea when I'm freezing cold and, you know, my feet feel like the ice blocks. Yeah. yeah. I remember I did that once and then I was like, oh, but it adds extra weight in this <laughs> bag. Remember you and Bodhi had to like help me with my Bergen all the time. Yeah. So I'll also let the, uh, once again, going back to special forces, but I have to say this, you know, and I've told Bodhi too, and I know I told you, but publicly I will say that I'm so grateful for you and for Bodhi because oh. there were, I wasn't scared of the challenges. You know, I'm not scared of heights and all that stuff. Like that didn't scare me. What scared me was being transported to and from because we were on like thin little icy mountain mm -hmm. roads with a 500 foot cliff. And that was, was, was scary to me. And, for, you know, for some reason, because you guys are so well adventured and traveled I know you have been in these situations before and you both just brought me so much comfort and you made me not scared. That's and right. Because so, we were like, ride with us, ride with, we right. kept like, yeah. And then it got to the point where I'm like, wait, can we make this a thing? Like, I need to ride with you guys. Otherwise, I'm going to freak out. And I you're like, yeah. I fucking love Bodhi though. Oh, oh God. Bodhi is best. awesome. Yeah. Like, he's a one of like the standout people I've met in the last few years. Like, yeah. What, what an incredible individual. Yeah. But both of you guys were, um, just such a source of comfort to me and really helped me get through it and I just felt like I could lean on you guys and you were so uh you know it kind of took me under your wing and you know it yeah. was it was a very I mean overall everyone was very supportive but yeah. the two of you guys were just so wonderful to me so I will be forever indebted wow. especially to you guys helping me put my Bergen on every <laughs> single time because it was heavy. It, and it wasn't even the strength aspect of it. It was awkward. The, it was awkward. Yeah. Very top heavy and just like, and it took a minute, like it took a couple days for me to kind of figure out, all right, this is, you know, because you got to like get the strap sorted. Yeah. And yeah, it was, uh, those backpacks sucked. And then when we had to do the push ups with them on. Oh, oh. God, that was horrible. Horrible. Yeah. Oh, that beasting. You know, this podcast is ghost and grit. You know, we <laughs> yeah. love to talk about, you know, both ghosts and grit and so much of the special forces show, you know, it it's it's grit. Like that's it. Group range indication type of fire. And there you go. <laughs> you remembered it. Um but like where where does your grit come from? Like where, you know, as an individual, 
you know, where, where's it? Where's the source? Um, I think it's probably started from having an immigrant father who had to work his ass off to become anything in this country and to become successful and literally somebody who also had to I mean he was a person who he was like a street fighter when he was a kid and had to literally get in like fist fights every day just to like get home from school mm. um and just like the stories that he would impart to us and um just saying how you know when you want something you have to go and you have to work for it and um don't let anybody tell you no because like everything is within your reach and everything is up to you and um you know it was just this level of determination that he had that like he was never going to let anybody tell him he couldn't do something and so i think that from him really kind of made an impact on me um you know i probably would never have 10 percent of like the grit he does uh but that especially when it came to doing you know the show even he was like you could do this and he was like such a uh you know, a cheerleader for me. But, you know, you never really know how strong you are until you have to go through certain things. And then, you know, when I lost Bob last year, um, that was something that I would have been like, there's no way I could get through that. Yeah. Like, how do you get through the loss of a spouse? Like, what? Like, I could, like, there's no way. I would just crumble and be a puddle and never be able to function again. And then it happens and then you find these sources of strength that you just didn't even know that you had. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait, did I? You look back and you're like, did I just get through that somehow? And and then you're like, how did I even do that? But then you're like, well, maybe I am stronger than I think I am. And mm. then those things, those experiences then kind of accumulate. And you're like, oh, I guess I guess I do have more grit than I thought I had. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's I I definitely would describe you as a, you know, a, a gritty woman. I oh, mean, the fact like having nice having like the the last couple of years that you've had and then to be like I'm going to go do this special forces show and get the shit kicked out of me and, you know, what like I was always I was very impressed by that cuz I don't know, you know, I don't know if I would if I don't know if I could do that. You know, it's like, you know, losing, like you said, losing a, a loved one and, and, you know, your spouse and someone that you plan to, you know, have have the rest of your life with. And suddenly it's like, you know, not what's happening. It's yeah. that's that's got to take such a, a huge, you know, huge toll and, and your ability to kind of uh, navigate that and come out in a way that is like, you know what, like I'm like we, we must go on. I think it's very, uh, you know, it was it was amazing to kind of learn about you and see. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that means a lot coming from you. And, you know, I would think like minute one when we were on on the show, uh, I had found out that. Well, I, I knew that you had that um, a tie to Bob. Yeah. And, you know, mutual friends. And um, it was funny, though, because we found like I, I mean, my, I never because I told you this, like my tie to Bob went back to when I was a child. Yeah. Because, you know, my I was good friends with my ch my sixth grade best friend was his neighbor. Right. And and their best friend, family friends. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it was nice to have that kind of connection. I think we looked a lot for those connections when yeah. we were on the show of like, you know, like, oh, I have this in common with this person or we have this mutual friend. Um, but yeah, I, I think ultimately I wanted to do it cause I was like, I knew that Bob would have thought I was crazy, <laughs> but I think he also would have been really proud. Yeah. And so it was nice to do something that I'm like, oh, I'm going to you know, show him something like a side of me that maybe he hasn't seen that he would have been, you know, impressed by or proud of. Yeah. Even though he would have thought I was nuts. <laughs> well, I think everyone yeah. thinks we're nuts yeah. for doing this. Yeah. I mean, like, absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely definitely not the uh, the normal thing someone no. signs up for, especially no. for the sake of television. You know, I you know it's funny though for the sake of television. I remember there was one point where I was like why am I doing this? Like, what's the real why? Like, I know I said my why in the pre-interviews and all that. And I, and I, and I, that's kind of where I hit a wall. Cause I was like, I'm, I don't, I don't get, I don't get accepted into the special forces club after this. I don't get like tabbed and like sent on a secret mission. So I, I was admittedly having a bit of a time like, yeah, I need, a, I need to kind of just ignore that. Cause it was eating me away a bit. It truly, truly, you know, everyone's reasons are different. And 
I truly did it because I wanted to be immersed in that world. I've always been so fascinated with and had such a appreciation for like the special forces and the military and the Navy SEALs and stuff. I'm like, what other opportunity are we ever going to have where we get to do this? And it really wasn't about like, ooh, I get to be on this show and, you know, or be with these people. And I was like, this is a crazy opportunity. And if I don't take this now, I mean, I'd also love the movie G.I. Jane. And I remember <laughs> even like in the 90s watching that movie, I'm like, oh, how cool would that be to just get the opportunity to do that one day? Mm. And so when this came about, I'm like, I can't not do I when I saw that promo of them diving out of the helicopter, I'm like, I'm doing that. Right. Sign me up. I'm doing that. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah, like I, mean, I said, I would do it again. Instead of into a warm body of water, we did it into a freezing, freezing cold, cold body of water in the middle of the night. Yeah, in winter in New Zealand. Yeah. Jesus. But it was awesome. Um, all right, let's talk ghosts. All right. Do you believe in ghosts? I actually have had a paranormal experience that was very interesting in Scotland. Oh, tell yeah. the story. Um, so this was at, uh, Craig Ferguson, uh, has a castle. He lives in a castle. Of course he does. Of course he does. <laughs> it was built in like the 1500s, um, in, in Scotland. And Bob and I were there for like a summer party he had, and this was like 2019. And we, the bedroom we were staying in, they were having, you know, their party. And the bedroom we were staying in, there was a staircase that led, it was like a winding staircase that led up to this bedroom. And there were no other doors or anything up there. It was like almost the top of, you know, like the turret of, of like the castle. And there, Bob and I went upstairs to like change shoes or something because the, you know, we were going to start dance, like they were having dancing and stuff. So we're like, okay, let's get comfy. So we went upstairs and we're changing and I felt and heard like the doorknob like turn and the door was like shaking like somebody was trying to get in. Mm -hmm. And Bob was like, tell those kids to get the hell out of here because there were some kids in the party and we figured that they were running around trying to get in. And it like didn't stop. Like the door was like rattling and the knob was turning and I'm like, I'm going to scare these kids. And so I th throw the door open and there is no one there. But And there couldn't have been anyone there because you would have seen, like they would have had to run down that winding staircase. Yeah. And there was no one in the staircase. It was dead quiet. And even Bob was like, what the, I was like, honey, like that was a ghost. And he's like, like, and he was not, he would not have, like neither of us would have jump to that conclusion yeah but it was like so clearly and there had been many many like craig and his wife had told us over the years there were many 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 ghost sightings in that house wow over the last several hundred years and it was like a crazy i'm like all right did that just happen and bob was like all right that was weird <laughs> like that was weird i'm like did we just see a ghost and he's like yeah so anyway that was my I, I would have said no before that, but then since I had that experience, I'm like, all right, I can some, some I can be persuaded. It. Yeah, yeah, and then that's you know that's the funny thing. It's like, uh, you know, I I spend a lot of a lot of time doing paranormal investigations. It's uh, funny that I, I actually I was thinking about it. I don't think I spoke about it once while we were doing the 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 show together. I just kind of just didn't come up. But um, you know, it everyone has kind of had an experience, mm -hmm. some kind of experience, whether they choose to call it a ghost or not or whatever right um and so for me you know and i always landed like there's there's something to this it might not be what we all think it is but there is something to it yeah do you um do you believe do you do you subscribe to any of the cryptid stuff like bigfoot or anything like that um not as much i would say probably not but it's so it's fun to hear of all the tales and the stories and it's like well these people are seeing something yeah you know like there maybe there's something to it but you know i i mean who knows what's out there? i mean we don't know, we like, don't know shit. Right? exactly um all right so we are gonna because you're from chicago yeah and we're gonna pull it we're gonna play a little clip i'm excited all right so this is a clip from the alleged mothman that was seen in chicago now the story of mothman 
is that it goes back to Native American times, and this was a kind of mythical creature that would appear before a disaster. And a lot of people say it warns you of the disaster, and some people say it's an angel, some people say it's a demon, but it appears in the shape of a moth and it has these bright eyes. So this is from a show, Expedition X, and this was captured. Now, it kind of looks bird or dragon-like. Yeah, very pterodactyl -y. And it was, uh, now this creature was filmed in Chicago. Um, and let's oh, look at Chicago. that. Oh, Chicago. Look at that. Do you think that's the Mothman or is it I mean, to a me, dragon that wouldn't, from Game of Thrones? Yeah, it looks much more dragon from Game of Thrones. Um, it doesn't really look moth-like, but, you know, I guess we would have to see it up close, you know. What would you do if you saw that? I mean, I'd freak out. It has a tail. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. That is pretty fucked up. I mean, I would say that's probably the least crazy thing. Do about you Chicago think right now, Foxy or Billy would be scared of that? No, they're like, we can ride him. <laughs> <laughs> we can ride him. <laughs> they're like, yeah, fu fuck that weirdo. <laughs> Wait, we it's a Muppet. <laughs> I... Most useless, pathetic person ever trained. <laughs> yes, absolute Muppet. Um, well, that was Ghost and Grit. Oh. You're Kelly Rizzo. Where can uh, people uh, find you? At Eat Travel Rock everywhere. Eat Travel Rock on on all platforms. All platforms. And uh, yeah, well, this has been great. This oh. has actually felt like very therapeutic because Wasn't like, it? wasn't this cathartic? Yeah, because it's like I. I'm haven't... so happy to see you again. This is like such I, I a. I know, and I haven't been able to like digest with someone. I know what we experienced, even when like the we've had to have those like obligatory uh, therapy calls. Oh it God. still doesn't quite hit the same. So right. th this has been good. Well, the, I mean, we went through something together. We did. It's like, you know. We survived. I know. I, I'm proud of us. Me too. I would, I would say I'd love to do it again, but I don't think we'll ever have the chance. But if we do, we're teaming up. It's on. Special Forces World Toughest Test. Uh, you can see Kelly and myself getting the shit kicked out of us. Uh, and that's um, on Mondays at uh, 9, 8 Central. Yeah. On Fox and next day on Hulu. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me, Jack. Thank this you, so Kelly. Nice. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Thanks.